It's February 9th today. I'm in an 11 acre field uh, that was the last field that I planted in 2018, 2018. In the summer, this field was planted in sunflowers, soybeans, cowpeas, sun hemp, and buckwheat, a diverse uh, cover crop mix. And then in mid October, I came back and roller crimped it and planted it in daikon radishes, 50 pounds of acre to the acre of wheat, and crimson clover. Uh, this field, this uh, coming summer, I'm going to, it's going to be my dove field, and I'll have it in a mixture of dove foods as well as some legumes to, uh, to help the uh, uh, sunflowers and dove grasses uh, do their best. Let's take a little closer look. I want you to pay an attention in particular to the size of the radishes here, and then in a little while we'll go to the first field that I planted uh, uh, in the fall of 2018, and notice the difference in the size of the radishes there. It'll be much bigger. So uh, let's take a little closer look at the radishes and the um, uh, crimson growing here. First thing you might notice is uh, this. Uh, deer have been up in here. They absolutely love the radishes. It is one of the uh, best things that I've ever planted for the deer, and it's a, a nice little treat that it also happens to be so fabulous for the soil as well. So uh, anyhow, you can see how they're eating the uh, uh, the radishes. A lot of times uh, they'll eat the tops early, but uh, now they're starting to eat the tubers as well. Here you can see. Uh, a radish tuber in about that deep, plus you got the hair roots, so probably got that much depth at least. Uh, uh, it'll do a great job of sequestering the nitrogen and nutrients in the soil and uh, feeding the sunflower crop that I'm going to come back in in May with and plant in this same field. I'll uh, crimp the wheat down. You can see the crimson clover here. Uh, uh, it will provide nitrogen in the field as well. Uh, for the upcoming crop, and uh, I think right now my plan for this field for the summertime will be sunflowers, pearl millet, brown top millet, soybeans, cow peas, sun hemp, and buckwheat. Uh, that full mixture with the legumes feeding the grasses and the sunflowers, and um, everything being for the doves as well as a little treat for the deer to eat as well. So uh, this field has been multi-crop, uh, multi-species cover crop uh, planted with a no-till drill now for about three years. No fertilizer, no pesticides, no fungicides, no herbicides. Uh, I do, I have sprayed it a little bit uh, uh, with glyphosate. Another radish there. Ah, a little bigger one. Ah, anyhow, I have sprayed it uh, with glyphosate, but my plan this year is to not spray it at all and go completely organic and see how the cover crops treat the weeds. Uh, uh, my hope is that uh, they'll choke out the grasses and broadleaf weeds. Uh, and if there's a few broadleaf weeds in it, it's no big deal. Frankly, if there's some grass in it, it's no big deal as long as all the cultivars do really well. So uh, time will tell, and I'll uh, bring you along on this little experiment. This is a 10 acre field I planted last September 2018. It was the first field I planted last year. I planted it in three pounds to the acre of daikon radishes, 50 pounds to the acre of wheat, and I think it was about 10 pounds to the acre of uh, medium red clover. It was a soybean field last year in 2018, and I decided to convert it over to a clover field because I'm going to be planting another larger field back behind me to the south in soybeans, cowpeas, sun hemp, uh, and, my, and my summer mixture. So uh, let's go down and take a closer look at this. You can see the daikons are starting to bolt right now. I'd love to be able to mow them. Uh, but it's a little too wet, so uh, yeah, if they bolt and go to seed, it's no harm done. I'll be able to keep control it uh, as we get into uh, the summer. Here we 
we are. Uh, you can see the uh, daikons have gotten quite large. Let's pull one up here. Yeah, I'd say that's gotten quite large. And the whole field's full of these, uh, so this is not an anomaly. Um, you can see it's that far into the ground. That's, uh, that's over 15 inches into the ground right there. And that's just the big part, making a very deep crevice in the soil. You can also see the uh, red clover right here that's growing, as well as the wheat. Um, everything's doing very well in here. I'd love to mow these daikons, but as I said earlier, it's a little too wet, so I won't be able to do it. Uh, that won't be a problem, though. They're easy to control. The daikons will do a great job of sequestering the nutrients, nitrogen in particular, uh, phosphorus, uh, to feed the clover through the summer months. So uh, as soon as I can, call it um, probably March or April, I'll get in here and mow this and release this clover and let it grow and uh, it'll be a great summer forage. Let's, let's take a closer look at the uh, divot. That's all the way up to there. That's the divot that the uh, radish made, and as you can see, it's that wide. So that will do a great job of holding moisture, collecting rainwater, um, holding the moisture in the field, and doing a, a good job of uh, managing the watershed. You can also see the duff. That's from the previous uh, year's crop, previous summer's crop. So this duff right here is actually feeding the clover and the um, radishes and the wheat that are in here. I plant these multi-species cover crops for several reasons. I've talked a little bit about the value to the soil, the fact that they improve soil fertility, they increase organic matter, they improve moisture absorption and moderate soil temperature and also help control weeds. They help increase the soil life underneath the ground as well as on top. But also, the fall species I plant all have wildlife value as well. The small grains, clovers, and radishes, turnips are all relished by not only deer, but many other species of wildlife as well. When I first started planting radishes, I've never seen deer take to anything any faster, but they primarily graze the tops. Over time, however, they started eating the tubers as well. You can see this buck has perfected the technique of separating tubers from the greens. It's midwinter here, and you can see what great condition he's in. I don't think that's an accident when you consider what we plant. <coughs> We've looked at a couple of options for fall food plots in this video for the purpose of enriching the soil as well as providing value for the wildlife. Both fields were planted in small grains, one in Elbon rye, one in winter wheat. Both fields were planted in daikon radishes, and you can see the giant difference between the daikons that were planted mid-September versus the ones that were planted in mid-October. The daikons like to be planted a little earlier and have more time growing while it's warmer before the cool weather sets in. One field was planted in medium red clover. That field will maintain as a clover field during the summer. The other field was planted in crimson clover. And that's the field we'll transition over to uh, a dove field. And we're going to follow both fields uh, from spring to summer and show how we maintain them and manage them with a roller crimper and with mowers and such. Isn't it cool that everything that we planted on this farm has such wonderful benefit for the soil, but it also has benefit for the white-tailed deer as well. Like this one right here. I found this shed just off the edge of one of these fields, and so we're going to take a look at some of the other deer that we grew on the farm, this one as well as some other deer that we grew on the farm, in future videos. Stay tuned. I hope you'll join us.